Needs a meditation class. Oops. Time doesn't exist. Time is an illusion. You will be late without being late. Time is man-made. Have a special guest today. Hey guys, it is Kate with Kitty B TV and Love Raid Lessons, and I was currently Super Soul Sunday, and I'm currently walking home from my meditation class. So group meditation is a really powerful tool. If you're trying to start a meditation practice, use the Google machine. You can probably find a class, hopefully close to you, if that's something that you're interested in. Now we are on a miracle walk, and I say we, because I have my first special guest appearance! Yay! This is Danielle, everybody! Danielle World, World Danielle. You can call her Danny. Yeah. You can call us Danny Cat together. And she just came to, not her first meditation class, but my first meditation class with you. Our first meditation class together. So we are just gonna have the most peaceful, wonderful home, I'm it's sure. So yeah, we actually yeah. yeah. It is not cold wind. It's beautiful. It is, it's really <laughs> nice. It's actually warm. It's a post-meditation. It's a beautiful time to go on a miracle walk and go miracle hunting. And that's what we're gonna do. People are like, what is she doing? Vlogging. Vlogging. <laughs> Vlogging in public. Hey guys, you're on my vlog now. Oh, Danny's a nurse. She's wonderful. <laughs> well, it is important because nurses are like, it says a lot about you because nurses are the best people in the world. Everybody, all the best people I know in my life are nurses. Healer. Yes, you're a healer. <laughs> you're warm, you're kind and thoughtful. All the nurses I know in my life are like that. My mom is a nurse and That's my- warm. My <laughs> my old roommate Mandy was a nurse, and she's lo just lovely people. But I don't know what they teach you guys. They should teach it to everyone, though. Whatever they're teaching <laughs> in nursing school, I think the rest of us need. All right, so that's oh, oh coming? out of focus. Oh, my arm hurts. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Like soft focus. <laughs> All right, so I'm now going to turn this camera off so that we can work on miracles. Bye. Say bye, dude. Bye. Oh, hey everyone. Today I wanted to do a little introduction to meditation because I believe that meditation is a really key tool for living a richer, better, happier life. It's also a really amazing tool if you suffer from any kind of anxiety or depression. The science is becoming really hard to deny. It's just proving over and over and over again that meditation and mindful practices have so many benefits on your mind, on your body, on your heart, on your relationships. So I encourage you to at least try it out. Like sometimes I wonder if maybe it's like actually the secret to life. Like people are like, what's the secret to life? And I'm like, oh, I think, I think it might be meditating. Hmm. That I used to think that meditation wasn't for me. It just, it wasn't my thing. I just couldn't, I didn't understand why anyone would sit there in silence. And if I did try and sit there in silence, my mind is just a roller coaster of imagination. I would definitely zone out like in church or in school or wherever I was. I would be far, far away in flying or traveling to some foreign country or on a date with some amazing guy, or becoming a super mega star, or whatever was going on, my brain really went to different places. So I thought that meditation was just, I just didn't get it, to be honest. And then somehow, I found myself at a 12-day silent meditation retreat center. And I have a strange change of events because I only somewhat recently really started to get into yoga. Yoga is another thing that I had to try many times. At first, I thought it was not for me. And then once I tried it here, I still didn't think it was for me. I tried it with this teacher, I didn't like it. I tried it with that school, I didn't like it. I finally found a school that I liked. And all of a sudden I'm practicing and they're incorporating meditation. I remember I was visiting my sister and she told me that she had a friend who had done 12 day silent meditation program. And my first thought was like, 
That sounds terrible. Like, I would never fucking do that. And it was kind of like the words came out of my mouth and then it was like, oh no, now I have to do that. <laughs> like as soon as I said that I couldn't do it, I wanted to do it. Pasana is not just no cell phone, no internet. It's, you know, no talking, no books, no writing utensils, no journaling, no nothing. It, it is just like you and your own thoughts. And I constantly joke that Vipassana is like the tough nutter of meditations. Like, um, it's not terrible. It's a really unique, cool experience, but it was really, really, really hard. Just you. <laughs> you yourself and you. I, I had done that experience and actually I didn't meditate for a little while afterwards because it was, it was hard. And I'm so grateful I did it, but it was so hard. I needed a break. Uh, the next thing that I kind of stumbled upon that brought me back to meditating again was the Oprah and Deepak 21 day meditation challenge. And it was great because it gave me a structure. It was much more, it was like much more gentle than possible. <laughs> um, and it was easy to do. Just every day they send you a meditation. Oprah gives you a little, intro, Deepak gives you a message, you listen to nice music, you get a mantra, like we didn't do one, there was no mantras. It was just like, there was no music. It was like, breathe, breathe, keep breathing. You woke up at 5 a.m. for this. Breathe, keep breathing. And then we got to the third day and they were like, now we're gonna get into the good stuff. And I was like, yes, now we're getting into the good stuff. And then they were like, okay, try and move less. Oh, I was in so much pain, it was awesome. It was, it was cool though. It's like climbing a mountain, like it hurts while you're doing it, but then you're really proud that you did it. So after I'd done a couple of those Oprah Deepak meditation series, I came across a flyer in my neighborhood one day for a, a Be Happy meditation series. It was a free meditation series. And so that brought me to the Sui Chimoy Center. Uh, Sui Chimoy was a spiritual teacher and he opened a center in New York and now they also have several branches around the country. And, and I think group meditation is a really lovely tool if you're trying to instill a daily practice um, because it helps to have that support. It helps to have teachers, it helps to meditate with other people because it creates a whole different energy than when you're doing it by yourself. Their meditation classes are free, centers in different cities, so I encourage you to Google it because if you're new, you can get some guidance and a lot of instruction and a lot of support from going to a Speech and Moy Center. And you can also Google him. What I like about Speech and Moy is he kind of dabbled in everything. So he was an artist, he was a musician, he was an athlete. He used meditation to reach new levels into each area of his life that he wanted to be better at. Um, so he's really inspiring and I really enjoy the group meditation practice. And I think it can be an excellent tool for yourself. So then I really thought, okay, maybe meditation is for everyone. There are so many different types of meditation. Like everybody thinks that you have to sit there and like lotus pose and and say om 385 times, but that's not necessarily true. You can use mantra, you can use breathing, you can sit on the floor, you can sit in a chair if that's more comfortable for you. You can do visualization, you can listen to guided meditations, you can listen to music. There are so many different options. So I actually think that meditation is for everyone. I think it's so important to get quiet with yourself once a day, every day, to quiet your mind, to get in touch with yourself, to really become closer connected with the deeper part of yourself. Try all different types, find out what works best for you. Mostly I just try and meditate, which is the hardest part. My roommate is laughing at me. Bitch, don't kill my bad. Bitch, don't kill my pride. Bitch, don't kill my pride. I can feel your energy. So, a couple tips if you're just getting started or if you're trying to make this a habit, maybe you've already been dipping your toes in the water and it hasn't become a thing for you. The number one thing that you need to know about meditation is that you want to create a habit. 
So a lot of the things that you will do in the beginning are just trying to get yourself going. It's just like going to the gym. You buy like your gym clothes and your sneakers and you sign up for a membership and you have your plan. And the very first thing that they suggest to us in our class is to set up a space in your home. It's not just like, oh, lay in your bed, which everyone advises against because they're always afraid you're gonna fall asleep. Although, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I just am falling asleep and I realize I never meditate it and I just like put on Deepak and I just lay in the bed and do it. I actually never fall asleep because I have a hard time falling asleep, but sometimes it's just more important to do it. Do it right. What is suggested is that you just find a dedicated space and it doesn't have to be like a room. It can just be like a corner and you don't need you know, a Buddha and candles. But if, if you like those things and if they're, they are gonna help you make it a practice, then yeah, go ahead, set up like a little, a little altar if that's going to encourage you. If that seems like too much work, it doesn't matter. And you know why it doesn't matter? Because you're going to close your eyes. All the work goes on on the inside. All this stuff is just about helping to make you a habit, getting you excited to do it, putting effort into doing it. So the number one thing, find space in your house that you are going to meditate. Okay, this is going to be my meditation place. The second thing that's suggested to us is to try and find a time every day you do it. Just like when you're trying to set yourself to a certain diet or a certain workout plan, you're gonna try and pick a time of day that works for you so you can make it part of your schedule. This is something that I struggle with hugely because my schedule is crazy and it is never the same any day. So I am really trying to get myself on a better schedule to do it after I first wake up and before I start my day. It's a work in progress. Even though meditation is relaxing, it's also kind of stimulating to your brain. So they actually suggest if you're gonna do it at night, do it at night, maybe when you come home from work or maybe right after dinner and then have some time before you're actually gonna go to sleep. So in case you're like inspired by something when you're meditating and all of a sudden you're wide awake and you can't fall asleep, that's not really the game plan. So tip number two, find a time that works for you. Tip number three, find a practice that works for you. So like I mentioned earlier, there are so many different types. So I encourage you to try all different types. Um, you can look on YouTube. There's so many different meditations there. You can do Oprah Deepak. I think for beginners, it's a great op option. You can get a book and then they might have little meditations. If you follow Gabrielle Bernstein, she's one of my heroes. I will link her down below. She has guided meditations. Um, you can try not listening to anything else at all. You can try staring at a candle flame. Meditating. Focus on the flame, focus on the flame. I'm looking over here. But no, I'm looking at you. Oh, no, no, no. Focus on the flame, focus on the flame. Or looking at a flower, or looking at a picture. You can try using a mantra. You can literally just look up a mantra. I encourage you to dabble. Try it all. You're gonna like some more than others. My fourth tip. Are we on four? One, two, three, four. Fourth tip is what I think is the most important key to a beginning meditator. I think this is the most important thing you need to know. You're not doing it wrong, okay? You can't meditate wrong. Here's the problem, so people sit and they decide or they put on their music and they got their space and they got their time and they're all set up and they're ready to go and they're like, oh, I'm gonna meditate and be a better person. And they sit there for their five, 10, 20, 30 minutes, however long you wanna do it. You can do it as much as an hour if you've got that type of patience. Some of us do not. They sit there and they're like, okay, clear your mind. And their mind is like, Rah! over here, over here, over here, look at me, look at me. Think about this, think about that. What are you doing next? Where are we going? Boop, boop, boop. Ah, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, just know that is part of the deal. That is what happens. I'm gonna close your eyes the first time you meditate and get a blank sleep. I've been meditating for four, three, four years, pretty regularly now. I do not have a blank sleep. 
I think about everything. I think about my list. I think about what I have to do that week. I think about what I said to my friend two weeks ago. I think about how my dad's doing. I think about <laughs> everything. The most important thing that you do in that scenario is you say, oh, okay, I'm having this thought. Once you realize that you've lost it, bring it back home. And you're here for like, sometimes like five seconds or less. Maybe you only make it back for a second. And then you're like, oh, I gotta get broccoli because I'm gonna make that thing later. And you're like, oh crap, I'm meditating. Okay, hold on. Okay. Okay, we're back here. Oh, and what did Lisa tell me that I had to do? What? There's something for work I had to do. And, oh, wait, 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 no, I'm meditating. Like, that's just how it is. Your brain is going to go crazy. It's going to be like fireworks. You're not doing it wrong. <laughs> Eventually, very, very slowly, those moments of quietness will start to expand a little bit. So maybe first you only had one second of quiet, and then two seconds of quiet. And then maybe you have three seconds of quiet. But then one day you're like super agitated and you can't focus at all. This happens. We have good days and we have bad days. It's just like playing a sport. Sometimes you have a great game. Sometimes you just barely show up. Sometimes you sit on the bench. That's just the way it is. And so just keep going. That's part of practicing meditation. It's forgiving yourself because you're going to have a million thoughts and bring it back and then little bit by little bit you start to spin. And sometimes you'll feel really peaceful after you meditate it and sometimes you'll feel like that sucked. But the one promise that I make to you is that I find once you start doing it on a regular basis, the experience that you have when you're actually sitting down will go back and forth, whether it feels peaceful or not. But what I find is the rest of my life outside of the meditation chair, okay. back in the real world, suddenly you react to things differently. And suddenly things start to fall into place. Suddenly things don't seem so bad. We practice so that when we are called to deal with something bigger, we are ready for it. And it's just like going to the gym. Like when you are actually working out, freaking hurts. You don't feel strong, you feel weak. But then after you've built your muscle up, then you can feel stronger every time. And something that hurts so, it was so hard to do two months ago, you can lift it up with ease. And that's the same thing with meditation. And it's just like magic. I don't know. Things happen. I also really like the saying, that praying is for asking and meditating it is for listening. Maybe you've been praying for inspiration or an answer or support, but when you meditate, you actually get a chance to listen and you might actually get the answer that you've been looking for for so long. So there you have it. The secret to life. <laughs> I haven't proven it yet, but I'm really starting to believe it. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more where that came from, subscribe below. And I hope you receive so much magic and so many miracles on your meditation journey. Thanks guys. Bye. I'm in a dream. <laughs> hey everyone. Why does my video look so weird? Hello. And now we're focused, yes! To let your light shine. After all this meditating, you're gonna glow like a little candle. Beautiful time to go. They said selfies. selfies. <laughs> Not really, but okay. It's kind of. My arm is starting to hurt. Do I look like I'm doing it right? Does this look right? I can't tell. <laughs> I'm pretty goofy all the time, so I don't really need help typically with my b-roll. I usually have too much b-roll. Marshall says you need more- wait. Marshall says you need less b-roll and more me-roll. Hey, Marsh. Bitch, don't kill my pride. Bitch, don't kill my pride. I can feel your energy from two planets away. I got my drink, I got my music, I will share it with you. Oh, no, no, just looking for miracles. <laughs> Do you guys ever have that feeling that you're being <laughs> followed? <laughs>
Like, you just get this weird feeling. Someone might be following you. I'm scared. I'm gonna walk faster. <laughs> You're gonna be the best little meditators ever. <laughs>